No one gave him a shot. They thought that he was going in there to get ragdoll like like Ben Rothwell at UFC 104. He walked into the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, against their hometown guy, and he knocked out Cain Velasquez in 26 seconds. And to all you people that are saying he got lucky, that it was an injury, that his punch did not lead to the injury, shame on you. Give this man his credit. Le Predateur, Francis Nganou up next on the program. Francis, <laughs> félicitations, mon ami. Merci, Ariel. Merci beaucoup. Comment what? ça va? Oh, ça va très bien. Uh, I, I'm assuming Super. it's uh, even more bien pour toi because of what you did last night in Phoenix. <laughs> wow. What has it been like? 13 hours ago, you did that to the former heavyweight champion. What is your life like now? Well, uh, it's the same, you know. <laughs> Uh, it was a great performance, and then it was a good fight. Now the pressure, the pressure and drop down, but you know life has to to move on. We have to move on. So not a lot happened in that fight. Obviously, it just lasted 26 seconds. But my partner Chael Sonnen yesterday told me that he was surprised how much Kane was trying to strike with you early on. He thought that he would go straight to the wrestling. Were you surprised as well? Um. Not really, because he didn't take so so long. Uh, like in all the 28 seconds that uh, the fight went, uh, he stri he strike for like few seconds and then uh, also uh, uh, strike uh, attack the takedown because uh, he get caught on the takedown action. Okay, and so when did you start to realize that he was in trouble? Because like I said, it seems like people are trying to discredit you. Could you tell us the moment that you landed a punch and you thought, okay, I got this guy? No, when he, when he fell, you know, when he fell down, I, I saw he, he, he didn't move. There wasn't a reaction for like a one or two seconds, but uh, then I just want to secure the, the victory. Uh, I shoot some punch and uh, the referee stopped the fight. Have you seen people say that like, oh, that wasn't a knockout, that he injured his knee, that's the only reason why the fight ended have you seen this chatter and if so what do you think of it no uh, you know some um there were there were a lot of unhappy people yesterday with that uh with that fight you know so they just they always want to uh, find something to say but uh what did his need uh burger it was a, a shot under his, his chin so not uh, doesn't matter what they say it's clear there is the video out there and they can check out it so your belief is that your punch led to him falling like that awkwardly and it wasn't just him you know moving no no know. my my punch my punch landed when, uh, before his knee right. so he was a, he was a knockout he just fell on his knee but he wasn't he, his knee didn't have a uh, problem uh, at all right does it bother so, like, you if, no it didn't he didn't bother me because i know that uh i i get i get it clear he was very clear i mean and so if someone refused to see it that's the problem you know but but i was curious if it bothered you that people weren't giving you the credit that you deserve well what people want to do is not uh, longer my concern. I told you that before. <laughs> when, when you were envisioning this fight, Francis, did you think that it could end that quickly? No, not at all. What did you think? Uh, I thought I'm going to take the first round to um, f um, analyze his game and then uh, before strike in the second round, maybe, you know. Then he just did so fast. I said this at the beginning of the show, Francis. I'm in awe of what you've done in your career. Not just because you're knocking these guys out, but because we all deal with, you know, self-confidence issues and self, you know, like like self-doubt. And after what you did or maybe didn't do in July against Derek Lewis, to come back the way you've come back against Curtis Blades and now Cain Velasquez is nothing short of amazing. Like what you have been able to do for your career and for your mind is just amazing. Like now I feel like all that is behind you. Have you officially moved on from all that? I feel like your confidence now is back to where it was after the Overeem fight. Yes, uh, as I said before, all that is behind me. The the old Francis, the old story is behind. This is uh, I I reborn. This is a new Francis, you know. This is a new Francis. I um, I define my new 
goals in life, you know, find my purpose, and then find, trying to find my uh, balance between a uh, fight and my personal life. You know, it's, I mean, I love this. I love this uh, business, but it's just a fight. It's just a profession. It's not. I still have some life apart of it. You know that I have to run that as well. I have to be happy in my life too. You know, so. Yes, and as I said before, I went there to have fun, and then I said I I said that everything could happen. You know, it wasn't like uh, I don't. Uh, of course, I, I wanted I wanted the victory, but I accept that everything could happen in the fight, like for everyone. You know, that happened to that happened to him. Um, we all know what he's capable of. We all know how great he is. So. Francis, why didn't you say in the cage, hey, I thought you were going to take the mic. You're such a nice guy, but you should have said, hey, Daniel Cormier, wherever you are, I just did that to your friend. You're next. And then walk away. <laughs> that would have gotten you the title shot. <laughs> no, I don't think I need that uh, to say that to get the title shot. And then Daniel Cormier, I don't know if you want to fight again or not. You know, well, I don't, actually, I don't know where is the heavyweight title uh, position. You know, because he's talking about retirement, uh, they have, um, uh, talking about fight, you know, no, 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 no real news about the title, the title right now. So I just want to fight for the title. I don't know if he will be uh, an interim or a challenge against uh, DC, but uh, however, I want to fight for the title. Justin Willis is gone. Uh, also, uh, Theodorus. Uh, let's see. He eight and three in the UFC. Yeah, just the fights never started. That's Almost like the biggest thing about Elias Theodoro is that he was hot and that he was a ring card boy for Invicta. That was always the biggest thing that sort of stuck out about his career. He he had a great record though. Eight and three in the UFC is a pretty good record. Um, well, here's the thing. Contractually, this is the way it works with the UFC contracts. They can cut you anytime you lose, right? So if you lose a fight. And it sucks, you know. I mean, I'm not talking about everybody's contract, but for the lower level guys, most of the way the pay st uh, structure is that you get half to show. You win the fight, you get another half, you know. So if you lose the fight, yeah, you might have got your ass kicked. You might be embarrassed. You've lost the fight in front of the world. You lose half your money, but then also you are open to being cut contractually from the UFC as well. So there's a, there's always that uh, element of doubt lingering for you now the pressure sucks i like your daughter yeah yeah tons of pressure as well that was why who was it that had a fight recently and when they won they started crying their eyes out in the octagon and i totally got it it was because you know i mean the fucking pressure man i think the guy had lost three in a row but it was an exciting fight i forget who it was anyway i'm going off topic elias theodore listen i like elias he's a smart guy he's a really really nice guy as well and when you speak to him and you spend time with him it's impossible not to like the guy um so I'm going to choose my words really carefully. I mean, he lost his last fight. He's, he, he's got a cerebral style. You know, he, he's definitely a tactician. Is it the most exciting style? No. And I say that with the greatest of respect. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm, I'm trying to be as nice as I possibly can. Uh, is he a tough nut to crack? Yes. Um, hence his record. You know, I mean, he only got beaten up until the loss to Derek Brunson by uh, Thiago Santos. And then there was one other that was good as well. Brad Tavares. So, yeah. Brad um, Tavares. You know, you're, pardon? Brad Tavares. Oh, yeah. Brad Tavares. <clears throat> Thiago Santos, who's fighting for the light heavyweight belt. And then he lost to Derek Brunson. No shame losing to those guys. And, of course, he had eight victories as well. So there's a number of cuts. Elias Theodoru. Is it the most exciting style? No, but is he a, ta is he a technician? Is he clearly talented? Yes. You know, uh, has he had success? Yes. But he did lose his last fight. And I feel like the fact that in his home country of Canada, the fight was in Ottawa, I was commentating, he was getting booed. That's never a good sign. That's no. never a good sign. So I think maybe, and it's not for me to comment on the UFC's actions. But they certainly don't consult me or you know tell me the reasons why i'm speculating but that can't have helped um it's a shame he's a young man he's talented he's good 
uh, he, he'll still have a bright future. He's very, very smart as well. Wilson Hayes in the fly with him. I don't know. Here's what I'll say. You look online, you see all these websites and the hypothesizing as to why they've done this and all the rest of it. And they're all trying to come up with smart reasons. They're trying to, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to look for an ulterior motive. Right. I don't think there is one. I don't think there is one. I think it's mainly a case of they've got over 500 fighters on the roster right now, you know, and you got to keep it fresh. You got to have new blood coming in. And I'll stick with Elias because he's the guy that I'm most familiar with. And again, as I said, I, I, I'm I'm a big fan of Elias as a person. As a fighter, he's very, very good. And he's very competent and he's very good and he has good success. But, you know, more so as a person, he's a great guy. But having a good manager and having success is probably not the cheapest guy ever, you know. And the UFC at the end of the day, and I'm not defending their actions, I'm just giving... you got to look at both sides, you know. They're a business, they're a business, and, and if they've got to pay out this amount of money, I don't know what his last purse was. Maybe you can look that up quickly, Harrington. But they've got to justify paying that. And if they can't justify paying the purse for whatever, you know, uh, you know, whatever calculation they use to quantify, you know, whether or not somebody's worth their purse, you know, they, they, they have ways of figuring that out. You know what I mean? They, they know the brand worth that each fighter brings to the table. And if, and unfortunately, it, it's a sad reality that it is a business. And if it doesn't make economic sense to pay, keep paying a person, then they're not going to do it. So you were just about to come in with Theodora's purse, I'm assuming. I mean, call me smart, but uh, call me a people person. Call me uh, intuitive or call me wrong. Which one is it? $81,000 for his last fight that he won. 38 to show, 38 to win, 5,000 fighter incentive pay. He claims he makes more money from sponsorship and endorsement than from UFC pay. I'm sure he does. That's not crazy. We have podcast advertisers, so I know how much they fucking pay. It's, there, it's not a crazy thing that he would make money from wearing sexy underwear. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 one hundred percent, and it's not a ridiculous amount of money either. I mean, I, I would, I'd say he's worth that money. I, I would. Um, Agreed. It's a shame. Listen, whatever it is, maybe there's things going on. Here's another thing as well. You know, when the when these journalists go out there and they write these stories and they're looking for, a lot of the time because it's a popular theme, it's to, they want to shit on the UFC. You know, because it's a popular story to write, it's a popular trend to follow, it's a popular narrative to put out there. Well, it's an easy Sometimes click if, when you when you take down the yeah, man. If you're if you're if, come on, you're like yeah, of course, man. Yeah, fuck the UFC. You're looking out for the fighter. Yeah. You're looking out for the little man. But they're also just just trying to get clicks which equal money for them they're journalists right or whatever whatever blog so they're essentially yep. just taking the easier route to getting more people to click on their horse shit yeah no, no exactly they're doing the exact same thing that they're accusing the ufc of being guilty of in some ways but uh but yeah you're right i mean and then also also i was just about to say things going on behind the scenes that people aren't privy to mm. unless, and unless the fighters you know they throw a tantrum and they come out there and they say well here's what really happened We'll never know. We'll never know. Because fighters generally don't speak about that. The managers stay professional and there's things going on. I'll say it, you know, my, my theory, and it's clearly an assumption and a theory, is, you, you know, sometimes you've got to trim some of the fat and you've got to bring in new blood. And if you're going to bring in new blood, as I say, you've got to trim the fat. And I don't mean fat as a disrespectful term to any of those fighters. I wish them all the best uh, with their endeavors. Elias. Wilson Hayes, Justin Willis, three guys that can still fight, they can still throw down, and they're all pretty much still in the prime. So I wish them all the best, and, and it's a shame. It is, but, you know, the UFC haven't come this far. They didn't, they're didn't. they not worth so much money if they didn't know what the fuck they were doing, yeah. and it's a sad reality. And I'm not on the end of that reality. If I was, I'd feel maybe more strongly. Uh, you know, I could be very impartial right here. I can sit here like... Uh, I'll say it, the UFC employee that I still am, you know what I mean? But I actually mean what I'm saying. I'm not saying this to toe the line with the UFC. It's just the reality. It's business. It's economics. And sometimes there's victims in that. And unfortunately for these guys right now, for whatever reasons the, the UFC has got, and as I say, I don't know what they are, but I'm sure there is some very, very good reasons. It's a sad reality, and I wish them the best. And I, I can't give a more well-balanced, fair opinion than that you know and i think that's fair and look the reality is you know this is the fight gamers you want to be with the ufc that it's undeniable you want that to be the promotion you're working for 
um, there's been plenty of guys that leave the UFC and come back. You know, that, that go and get a few wins. Um, and then you have a marketable name, Elias Theodoro. He goes out and gets a few fights in Bellator, you know, crushes some heads, does what he has to do. He's right back there. It's just a couple of negotiations away. And to be honest with you, we'll come back to a better contract, likely. You know, um, and, and also I should say, $81,000 a fight, even if you're only fighting twice a year, $160,000 a year, pretty good money for living your fucking dream. I, I, I think that we, we lose sight of like, you could be working a fucking day job that you hate, making $40,000, having a mortgage that you can't pay, hating your life, not doing what you want to do. You know, there, there's an invaluable experience in living your dream and doing something like becoming a professional mixed martial artist, traveling the world, being known as that. He has this really amazing thing that he'll be able to tell his kids one day, like, this is what I fucking did. There's yeah. so much value there. So much. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was just about to say, I mean, I mean we were going to move on with the conversation, but you just, you know, another thought occurred to me. Um, this journey of being a professional fighter, it, it, it doesn't last forever. You know, and some, you know, I was lucky. I had a very, very long career. I managed to win the belt in the twilight of my career, you know, and, and I've parlayed that into other things. Some fighters, you know, they work their asses off. They get one shot in the UFC and it doesn't work out and they move on and they move on with their life. You know, for me, you know, retiring is, you know, it's become one of the best things I ever did. Yeah. And it's, for some people, it's a blessing in disguise. I'm not saying that he's not suited to the life of a fire. Where he was very clearly successful in the UFC. But, you know, he, he's a young man. He's smart. He, he's got a lot of potential. He's good looking. You know, he's fucking really good looking, according to a lot of girls. He's not my cup of tea. But from what I hear, he, he's super good looking. He's got that fucking head of hair going for him. You know, There's, he's got a lot of options, you know. So, and sometimes... It can be a blessing in disguise. It makes you move on to another facet of your life. Or well, you take uh, the other route Brennan and you Trump say, no, I'm a fucking fire. I'm a fire and I'm going to prove you. I'm going to go away. I'm going to kick some ass in another organization. I'm going to be a champion of 1FC or Bellator, as you said. And who knows, maybe ends up in the UFC. Either way, Wilson Hayes, Justin Willis, Elias Doru, and anyone else that has lost a job recently. Because that's what this boils down to, Lewis. That's what you got to remember. This is people that, are, for the most part, have families. I don't know if they have kids um, that are losing their jobs. And no, yeah. nobody wants to see that. That's, you know, that, that, that's like one of the, the most depressing, sad things that can happen. That's you know? an interesting and point. And it's easy to sit here and be like, oh, well, it doesn't make economic sense. The reality is, is some motherfuckers lost their job. Yeah. And that sucks. I agree. And, and I never really thought of it that way. I never actually put it into the, that perspective. And you have guys, it's very easy to sit on our, you know, on our couches and go, ah, dude, that fucking guy, oh, shit performance. He's got to go. They got to get rid of him, dude. He's not, you're literally, what you're calling for is a man to lose his job. So you didn't enjoy it. He didn't, you didn't think he brought it that time. How could you ever want a man to lose their unless they personally hurt you how could you what is the end result of that you you have another person in the world who's not being productive who's not contributing to society is not contributing to economic growth what there's no benefit this is why when you see people go after pe people's jobs you know in the media for saying dumb things making dumb jokes you're like dude what is going on here somebody said something you didn't like so now you want them to be taken out in a race completely of every single way to be productive maybe they make $250,000 a year and they pay taxes and that goes to fucking build a school dick dumb dickhead fucking asshole there's value in that and there's probably more of a net positive than a negative when people are just making dumb jokes and saying dumb things um but it is a very interesting point that i never really heard anybody articulate before you know it's these guys we we go we'll we'll talk about this these three guys it's a little paragraph that harrington included in here uh elias theodore justin wren i'm sorry justin willis and uh wilson hayes We'll, I will forget the names of the guys we even mentioned as soon as the show's over. I will forget that we even talked about this. It means almost nothing. It's, it's a throwaway thought. And sometimes you, so, you should reflect on what it really means. These guys put their lives on the line. They get in there. And for our entertainment, they want to do it because, you know, they make money. It's their dream as well. But we are savages and we're watching this and we're watching it in a very perverted way because we don't have the balls to do it. And uh, I think sometimes you step back and go, fuck it, dude. You know, you, you, you take your hat off to those guys yeah. and wish them the best as opposed to going, ah, well, he sucked. He went 3-0 and or 0-3 in his last three fights. So, fuck him. Yeah, well, 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 for sure. I mean, as you just said, I mean, as I said, you know, it's somebody losing the job. you got to remember if the performance wasn't what you expected or what you like, you got to remember they've got the balls to step in there. They're going through the training. They're making the sacrifices. I've got... 
a very good story of hardships and ups and downs and trials and tribulations and sacrifices guess what i'm not a special fucking case i'm not you know my story isn't uh this crazy cinderella story most fighters go through the same things they make the same sacrifices so I if you have not already hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on mma news outlet